What are you did doing? Did you f Liza you Minnelli? You brought it up. You just I said it. You said not, it was your I holy did trinity. You f I did, Liza Minnelli. I did not. Liar. Did she give you well, a look hand at job? Smile. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we already started. <laughs> The theme song playing now. You may not know that because you're not wearing a headset. Yeah. But well, I can. Does it? You don't have to. Are I you mean, take, it's a, taking questions. Uh, I'll be asking questions. Why is this night different than all the no that? That is the four. One of the first four questions. So not let sure. me just stop. This is Howie Mandel does stuff. I'm Howie Mandel. I'm Jacqueline Schultz, his daughter. And Gene Simmons. Not Richard Simmons. Not Richard. But you know, on I, I, if you're not watching it on YouTube, they could think it was Richard. It Simmons. might. Have you ever been confused Where with is Richard? Richard? I had an argument actually with a woman who was, who I think meant well, but I think she was verklempt or something was going on. For you goyim out there, verklempt is one of those <laughs> words you should look up. It starts with a V. And uh, she said, oh my God, Richard, how are you? I'm sorry, ma'am, you're mixing me up with Richard Simmons. I'm Gene Simmons. Don't, don't tell me. You know, it was a very, I didn't want to press it because I felt so badly for her. So, so you did you were so you I, you were so nice. I on, so I put on an orange, you know, kind of wig and uh, exercise started her. Started to work out. Did you stretch her? Women, I don't know. You stretched her. I did what? Did you I stretch? Stretched? You're not allowed to say that anymore, Howie. What? Do, uh, do you worry about being politically <laughs> correct? Because you, you, I am you... so sick and tired of it. But the pendulum, kids, the pendulum will actually come back. A little more to the center. It's so extreme now. I know a few comedians who will not. Seinfeld, for instance, is not going to tour any college campuses. Right for a long time. Somebody is going to get upset. Well, but that's the point of jokes. I get it. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm scared too because the point is that you were supposed to be politically incorrect, and it's supposed well, to be wrong. Otherwise, it's that's not what's funny. Fun. Right. That's right. what makes it funny. A pratfall is at somebody else's expense. But I, I want to talk about you, buddy. And before I, knew I, I liked him. <laughs> but before I talk about you, I want to tell the, I want to tell our audience that yeah. we have a history. One of the biggest boosts in my career. All right, settle down. Well, it's true. Came from Gene Simmons. I've told this story before. I just told it. I was just on uh, Jennifer Hudson's show, and she was telling a story, and I said, "Wait, wait, wait! I got a better story about this person." So here it is. I was a young kid. I got the Merv Griffin show, which was a big deal at the time. I don't yeah. think anybody under 30 knows who Merv Griffin was. Do, do, I'm looking at the guys in there. Do you know who Merv Griffin is? Do you know, Kyle? I know the name. For, uh, what do you think Merv Griffin did? He had a show. There. So they do know. Yeah, but then <laughs> do they know he created, literally created and wrote the theme songs for the two biggest game shows ever? Wheel of Fortune. And? Jeopardy. Correct. Yes. Uh, we have a two-week vacation in Bangor, Maine. <laughs> so he did. He created the game shows. He had his own afternoon talk show. He was a singer. He was a... He was a singer. He was a band, like the... Band guy, yeah. A band, the, in the days of the big band, he was the boy singer. But anyway, that's... We're talking about centuries ago. And I was so thrilled to get... This is my second... I, I, I share another thing in common with, with you. I know that you guys... On Kiss, your first big TV exposure was Mike Douglas, right? Yes. Yeah, so that was mine too. But my second was Merv Griffin. Nobody really knew me. I was the third guest. It aired. I flew back to Canada, where I'm from, and I got a call from my agent saying Gene Simmons had called. Gene Simmons from fucking Kiss had called and said he saw me on Merv Griffin. And I thought, oh my God, like I haven't... That, I was, you have no idea. I, could, I was beside myself just to hear your name, just to hear the fact that you guys, that you had seen me on TV. No, but I got to tell you. <laughs> no, I was doing that, to, not to you. Just, he made a, for those that are just listening, he did a jerk I off. I was exercising he did a, one of those workout machines that do that. Yeah, no. Yes, you go were, ahead, finish like, a, like I'm jerking you off. I'm not. I'm telling you the truth, what it meant to me. And then you said you saw me on Merv Griffin and you thought I was very funny. And would I be interested in being the opening act for your girlfriend? Yeah. I went, yeah, yeah. I don't even know what that means. And I said, who's your girlfriend? And you told me. Yep. Diana Ross. Mm -hmm. Were you living with Diana Ross? Yeah. Wow. And then she, you hired me. She hired me to be her opening act at Caesar's Palace. And I flew in. I saw that show. Yeah. You were hilarious. She was backstage. Yes. 
laughing her patooties off. I know. I don't know what her patooties are. I didn't get never yeah, got a chance to see them. Nobody knows that anymore. It's I'm, an old word that you're not allowed to say anymore. You're, but, you're 12. You, you don't know that word? Patooties? Yeah. Uh, I said it first. Maybe. A little bit. I know I've heard du- it. I know double Ds. I don't know patooties. I know patooties as much as I know who's the other guy that you just asked if we know. Are you guys turning up her mic? Because I can't Merv hear her. I'm just kidding. I want to say because of the... You can't hear me? It's very... I can hear you. Okay. Are you but producing now? Are you producing? <laughs> Am I what? Are you hard of hearing? Pardon? Are you hard of... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I have a question. And I know this has nothing... See, now you're speaking up. Oh, thank you. Okay. I'll speak up a little bit more. Um, if you open for Diana Ross, is that a good gig? Because aren't people there to hear music and so no they one hated wants me. to... Do you realize... Bad, bad question. Bad no. question. There's no such thing. When you're starting off, just let them see you. There's no such thing. Well, I got to tell you... I've got a... It's not the right mix and all that. No, no, no. But it was fucking hell. The The lights went down. Of course. Caesar's Palace. <laughs> the audience would roar. They go, Caesar's Palace is proud to present an evening of Diana Ross. That You could hear like it's a, like a fucking wave of roaring. And if you listened really closely or you were my mom, you heard them go, and now Howie Mandel. And I had to work... That nobody liked me. Nobody enjoyed me. I could hear the patooties that falling. Is, that is not so. I was is, there. I'm telling you. People laughed. You not. and you and your patootie. <laughs> A few, maybe like twenty me people. Me and my patootie. <laughs> did you live with? So you lived with? How long did you live with Diana Ross? Oh, on and off about two years. Wow. And and is is a story that I know, weren't you dating Cher before that? And did you yeah. cheat on Cher with of Diana Ross? Of course. <laughs> yes. So you're dating Cher. Yes. Did she catch you with Diana Ross? No. Uh, what had happened was I, uh, by the way, both amazing women. There's not a bad thing you can say about. Did, no, I think they're both beautiful. Wonderful mothers. Everything. You still talk to them? Sure. Let's call Diana I, Ross. It was Christmas time and I, what do you get? What do you get, Cher, for Christmas? You know. So I asked her. I don't know what to get you. You got everything, and I've got to go back to New York to rehearse. We're going back out on tour, and she said, "My best friend Diana's there. Just call her up. Tell her I told you, and she should take you shopping. She knows what I like." <laughs> oh <So>. my God! <laughs> and she, and Diana knew that Cher loved your penis. I beg your pardon, Howie. Well, I'm just saying, you wanted a Christmas. You said Diana knows. Go ahead, finish your story. Well, these are semantics, but I'm not (laughs) anti-semantic. There you go. I love what you did there. He's writing these down. See, kids, writing entails uh, a utensil you hold with one of your hands, and there's paper made out of trees. uh, Okay, so no, finish this. This is an amazing (laughs) story. So are you living with Cher at the time? Well, yeah, but I had to go back out on tour. Right, but you went to New York, and she... Yes. She, she hooked you up. you up with your with her friend to yes. shop for her. What happened? Uh, I went up to meet Diana, who mm. was lovely and all that, and she gave me chocolate cake. <laughs> uh, actual, I- an actual piece of chocolate cake. Oh, oh. <laughs> You are, everybody, you are so bad. No, I'm, but I was just looking at I'm everybody's telling, face in the control room. I am everybody. telling Simon about you. Did You're you break trying. up a friendship? Are, are, were they no did, longer friends? I did not. I think Diana and Cher stopped talking with each other, but I remained friends. So because I mean, you can't have well, your cake and eat it too. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> Wait, they stopped talking to each other after. Well, if you don't swallow, it doesn't count. <laughs> right, Howie? That's very Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> it's not kosher. Go ahead. Um, but they stopped talking to each other Are they, after yeah. you went to New York. I I know I you tr- remained friends with both of them, but they What were- did you get share? <laughs> what did you end up buying share? I remember going with uh, by the way, Shannon, love of my life, who we have kids together, we're fellow married. Canadian. Love she's very she's a newfie. Yes, I know. Stay where you're at and I'll come where you're too. Bye. That's how they talk in Newfoundland oh, from you have Canada. No idea. You got to kiss the screech. But she doesn't talk like that. No, not like this. Not like Popeye. No. Right. But those phrases are very new. Why are you bringing your wife up now? I'm talking about how Well, she's how probably you... not thrilled with this conversation. Is she listening? What? Tell, tell her not to listen. Oh, Shannon. Don't. You know. Don't listen. But this is, this is pre-Shannon. That's right. 
So we're talking about... Oh, but even during Shannon, I was an asshole. Arrogant, selfish. So st- were you, were you cheater, out shopping? Were you shopping oh, yeah. for Shannon with other... Who, who no, took you no. shopping? No, there was no shopping involved. I was just, you know, fucking... Uh, that's it. That's Shop- the end of the sentence. Self-absorbed, <laughs> fucking arrogant. Shopping for pussy. You are so. That's not you are so for my sweet. daughter. <laughs> but if you're in a band, you don't have to go shopping. Okay. It comes to you. <laughs> All right. What do you have? A, did you have an open Delivery. relationship with? Uh, no. Shannon? No. So let's finish the one shopping spree. <laughs> Share. <laughs> what did you buy? Share. Like, how did Share find out? Or you said, "I'm not coming home." Here's your gift. Well, they. Uh, I wasn't privy to the conversations, but soon thereafter, I I bought a place for Cher in New York <clears throat> on Fifth Avenue, and she had her designer uh, design it. Mm-hmm. It was a penthouse on top of 64th Street. It's still a lovely place overlooking the Children's Zoo, as a matter of fact. It's an amazing place. Elevator comes right into the place, you know, all the accoutrements. And by the time it was finished, I had to go back out on tour, and then Cher noticed I didn't stay there, that I was staying a few blocks away with Diane at her place. Right. So, you know, she said, what's going on? So you bought her this. But I, I'll tell you crazy. You want to hear something crazy? Like what we've already I mean, been hearing is not. Do you want to hear not? something crazy? Yes. yes. <laughs> no. That's no. pretty crazy, right? It is. She's not laughing, though. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta do girl jokes. Okay, so here's inside. something crazy. Okay. So uh-huh. uh, I go, there's a true story, no okay. exaggeration. I filming a movie or something, and I have a weekend off. So I go to the Playboy Mansion where they have the uh, Midsummer Nights party. About 100 Jewish guys, because mostly producers and all that stuff are right. people of the chosen persuasion. Right. And 300 uh, blonde chickses, mostly. Okay. All lifted, separated, and pointed in my general direction. So far, not so crazy. Some wearing nothing, some body paints. I mean, it was a very uh, nice place. Right. And I go there with Miss January or Miss something and her friend. And You don't short, remember names, you just remember the month. Howie. These are not important issues. These are just surface issues. It's right. It's more important. Names are not important. Miss January. (laughs) So uh, Richard Perry, who's a record producer, um, comes over. I had known him before, and he said, "You got to meet the, you know, these two. They're sisters." I'm going, Mm. "Okay, that's great." And January and February. Shannon walks over. No, she was the playmate of the year. Shannon walks over with her sister Tracy. Uh, Shannon is six feet tall. Shannon's stunning. And with the heels and everything, big hair and big stuff, she was towering at, oh, I don't know, six five. And naked? Excuse me? Naked? You said so. Pretty, you know, it's, well, Playboy, yeah. you can't wear much. Yarmulkes are okay, but other than the head covering, you don't know what that is because you don't. So Shannon and But well, you sister. worship one, right? You Sh- worship the Jewish kid. Yeah. Me? I'm yeah. Jewish. Oh, you are? I am Jewish. That's why she's giving me the stink eye. <laughs> no, she's not. That's not a stink eye. She no, has I a, have default she, bitch face. She has a default face. De- it's something I'm working on. She has I a have, wandering eye. I have default bitch face. It's just my resting face. Default bitch face. My resting face is really bitchy. I'm sorry. I'm working on it. I, I like it. Okay. <laughs> so Shannon and her sister come over. Is her sister as, I don't know her sister, is her sister as hot as her? She certainly was. Was well, is she listening to this? I'm don't listen to this, <laughs> okay. And so, I'm taken aback. Oh, not from the front, you don't start in the front and I then knew, turn her over. <laughs> I knew where this was going, <laughs> and so she's not at all impressed because I put on my uh, you know, that thing lower your tone, lower your gaze, give her the uh. Goo goo eyes and stuff. Not it. Not interested at all. So, sort of nice to meet, meet you. Kind of. Does thing. she recognize you? Does she know who you are? She has never hate. She still hates Kiss. No. She likes. Does that make her more appealing to you? Does that make her more of? No. I have to say, in all honesty, I was just stunned when I saw her. 
I was bereft of all logic and anything. You know, what? like in movies, when it hits you, like a two-by-four in the back of the head, I was like, what was, what was that? Because I've seen lots of pretty girls, and, you know, but there was something about her. And I struck out. And you struck I, out? What, what well, you... the conversation only lasted, oh, I don't know, 30, 40 seconds. Then she turned and walked away. Well, that was interesting and sort of walked away. And so I said good, good night to the other two ladies, Miss January and March and so on. And, oh, by the way, the guys have to dress either in their underwear or pajamas. The girls can wear nothing or... Uh, corsets and things like that. So you're just standing there, all six foot two of you, just in tidy whities talking and to... Not only that, but I really didn't have pajamas except when I was like in my early 20s, but I'd grown you know, thicker and everything, so the silk pajamas were so tight you could guess my religion. Right. Did you get that picture, Holly? I'm, I'm, I have it, but I'm trying to get rid of it. I okay. don't want to see your... Jewish girl? Penis. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Got it. So... Jewish girl. Uh, by the way, your, your engineer there has girl earrings on what's going on with that <laughs> is that kyle i forgot kyle? Kyle? no kyle. it's hollywood it's he okay you can do all that. those are gauges can't do that howie Why? can't do any can't take a breath without offending somebody i don't think he's offended you can't offend kyle not offended no no how about this uh, <laughs> so there's nothing you can say to uh, offend i go kyle. into the vestibule which is a big word like gymnasium as you walk in there are paintings, and Hef had a Dali piece of art, D-A-L-I. Salvador Dali. Salvador Dali. And I'm look, and it's a nude. It's a female nude. And I'm bending over and looking at the uh, Dali signature. This is going to get to the main point quickly. It doesn't matter. It you does. say you're looking at the signature, but you're really just staring. No, no, I'm at just the, looking uh, yeah, to see know. if it's a real Dali. And Shannon apparently uh, came back and snooped around the corner, and she said, nice ass i thought she meant me but she was talking about the painting at any rate we started the conversation again and she takes me by the hand and you know like james bond you press a button on the wall and the bookcase opens up and you go into a secret room she leads me downstairs in back of a wall of books as i recall and down underground is a pool table about that that size your desk right and I've told this story before, so she's not going to get upset. And so usually, as is my wont, I would have done what the good book says, which is spread thy seed, you know, do the Lord's work. It's right. just so in the book, spread thy seed. No, I know. You're very religious. and <laughs> I was a Hasidic uh, Jew. I know I you were. studying to we'll, be a rabbi. We'll talk about that in a minute. But Hasidim, but I don't Don't go them. into being a Hasidic Jew when you got her lying on the table to lead spread. Don't, don't veer she wasn't, from... No, no he no. said that that's what he would normally do, oh, but this no, is different. Oh, yeah, normally. No, I was jumping like ahead in my mind. I <laughs> was actually more interested in Shannon as... I mean, yes, stunning and all that, but the conversation was different than I'd ever had before. She Why did you bring up the table then? It, there was not much room other than the table. <laughs> you so you there's no place to sit. Oh, okay. So you sort of position your butt on the table, and okay. and we're talking about I come from nothing in Israel, my mother and and Shannon, her upbringing in Newfoundland and. Saskatchewan, Sask Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and all that. And I'm fascinated by her, and she says, look, uh, if you want, you can call me tomorrow. And she slipped me a number and went upstairs. And I'm down there underground say, well, I was like, what happened to you, Simmons? Where's your game? And I was way off, like when your, your center of gravity isn't on, you're not in your right mind kind of a thing. And I left, got into the car, went back to the Beverly, Beverly Hills Hotel. My tongue's too big, it gets caught. Yeah. Went back to the Beverly Hills If you're Hills watching it Hotel. on YouTube, it's flapping all over the room. Yeah, I would put it out except the floor is a little dirty. <laughs> See what you're talking there. about your, your tongue, right? No, my, my schmeckel, of course. Okay, okay. So <laughs> are you familiar with, the, is that an old word or is that still in? She knows what a schmeckel is. I mean, it's not still 
in I haven't heard it used. Well, it's about time you have. Okay. <laughs> please don't talk to my daughter. I know what it da- is, though. <laughs> please do not bring up your schmeckle to my daughter. <laughs> That's your daughter? This is my yeah. daughter. You didn't say a word about that. I said I'm Jack. I'm yeah, his daughter, daughter, Jacqueline daughter, Schultz. Daughter, daughter, you couldn't hear me. I'm his daughter. I'm really? Yes. Yeah. Thank God she doesn't look like you, <laughs> Howie. Yeah, I, th- thank God. I know. I have a very pr- beautiful wife. Who I I met at an an art exhibit also. Okay, so we're getting to the uh, main point, which is she gives me the number, and I try. When I get back to the Beverly Hills Hotel. I always have single rooms, no suites. I don't go for that. You don't go for just that. want a bed and a place to poop, and that's it. I don't care about. Have you ever done it in the same place? Have you ever pooped him dead? Why, yes, I have once. Really? Okay. Let's hear can, that let's story. Let's hear that story. What, can I please get to the punchline? Okay, but okay, after we're coming right. back to... Look at the tension with how he's legs. <laughs> no, I just think it's great to talk to Gene Simmons about the one time he pooped in bed. Yeah, because you never have. That's part of your You're act. You're going to tell us. You get on stage and you poop. But you, you will tell us about pooping in bed, why right? N- why not? Okay. Jackie. Yeah. This is a commercial now. I know. I was in the middle of the podcast, and then, boop, here I am. Again. It happens every time. Well, you know. today's episode is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. I love Surfshark. Do you know what a VPN is? Yeah. It's a tool. We've talked about it before. What is it? We love it. It's a tool that improves your online privacy and protects you from hackers. Right. Do you know how? Um, like if somebody comes at you with a knife and they want to hack you, no, you go, don't go near me. I got a VPN. It's not the same thing. It basically acts as a shield and hides your IP address. So everything you do online stays private, whether it be like reading the news, streaming some shows, listening to podcasts, anything, you name it. Or my porn. <laughs> exactly. Okay. <laughs> Plus, if you use a VPN, you can virtually travel the world from the comfort of your own home. And Surfshark gives you over 100 countries to choose from. So that means mm-hmm. sometimes you're geo blocked and you mm-hmm. can't watch. I'm from Canada. Yeah. And I do things in Canada. I know. And I love to watch me in Canada. I know. But down here, I can't. Yeah. I can't get enough of me. I'm a huge <laughs> fan of me. Okay. <laughs> So once you change your virtual location, you'll be able to bypass censorship and restrictions and find your favorites on Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, and other streaming services, or even access new libraries to watch for even more content. Yeah. So you can you can you can shop in places that we're not allowed to shop. You can use this Surfshark VPN for everything. YouTube. Oh, yeah. Uh, if yeah. YouTube, if you can't see a YouTube video because of your location, Surfshark. That's what I just said. Yeah. So try Surfshark today, totally (laughs) risk-free, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deal slash Howie. Enter promo code Howie for 83% off and three extra months free. You heard me right. Three extra months for free. You know what's making me laugh? What? 83% That's off. what I was just thinking. I don't understand I that. that. I mean, that's a lot, but yeah. 80, just say Howie and you get 83% off. That's <laughs> surfshark.deal slash Howie. Let's go back to the podcast. Uh, <laughs> she gives me the number and I try calling right away the next day. And the numbers doesn't work. Hello, what you do? Hi, uh, it's Gene Simmons. I'm calling for Shannon. No, you don't know what you do. And the guy hangs up. And I'm going, wow, there's some weird guy. I call back again a few times. Nobody here, Shannon. Goodbye. And I hang up the phone. Wow. Either this guy doesn't want me to talk to her or it's a wrong number. And so I'm watching TV in the single room. And I see under the door a photo being, because the front door is right there near the bed. Right. And a photo gets pushed under, and I get up and open the door, and whoever it was is gone. And I look at the photo, and it's one of those Playmate of the Year photos, very attractive, black and white, Harrell and all that. And on the back is a note from Shannon saying, you know, a gentleman always calls a lady if... uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. What you did is I gave you my number and you didn't call. And I felt badly. And on the bottom, all of a sudden, I realized the end was a four, not a five. She gave me a wrong number. And so I finally called the number. You gave me blah, blah, blah. She goes, yeah, whatever. She will not admit to anything. So in those days, I didn't drive. I had a driver and 
a guy, a guy who used to be a baseball player who got hit in the eye. These are all true stories. The so guy you had a driver. You have a one-eyed driver. You didn't. The story is that you had a one-eyed driver. You didn't close the deal with Shannon Tweed, no. and you pooped in the bed once. True, but not at that time. That was another I know, time. I know. So I go over and we <laughs> I can't. I said, let me get you some food. I'll get you because I've got a car outside and a driver with one eye who used to be a baseball player. I'll go to the uh, Green Blatt's, which was a deli. Deli on stuff. Sunset. I think it's closed now, unfortunately. It is closed. Uh, wait for the ending because it's uh, worthwhile. You, you, God knows and I have been so waiting. so I, I go there and uh, I don't have any cash on me because I hardly ever... So you don't carry That cash. was real smooth of me. So I had to borrow the money from the one-eyed baseball player, who's now my driver, and brought back, you know, gefilte, I don't know, crap. Stuff yes. she doesn't eat. She's from Canada and not of the chosen persuasion. She hates right. that stuff. She hates Jews. Uh, You're saying Shannon yes. Tweed. <laughs> Thank you, Howie. <laughs> and who doesn't? Right. And so I, and at that time, I'm living with Diana, you know, on and off, because I'm doing, so I was doing Oh, this is another cheating thing. Uh, well, nothing happened. It's but not cheating, yes. it's shopping. Shopping. He, he calls it shopping. 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 So I, I tell Shannon, you got to come to New York. I want you to be with me. I got to oh, no. figure out what's going New on. New York. And the first thing I did was call Diana. I said, I want you to know I met this girl. Her name is Shannon Tweed and all that stuff. You know, she wasn't happy about it. But the sense was, you'll, we'll figure that, you know, it's not good. I'm not happy. But it's not terrible. But I'll, I didn't say that, but we'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. And so a few weeks later. Is Cher so, in her apartment at the same time? Cher... Uh, that you bought. I, had, I was. I had my own place five blocks away, and actually, it didn't make Diana happy. But when Cher came back to New York <laughs> to do "Welcome to the Five and Dime," yeah, she was afraid of staying in a regular hotel. She came by herself, so we stayed together. Oh, you were while Cher. I was while I was with Diana. Diana, you are a fucking superhero. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. So, <laughs> but it, it's up front. There's I've got no, you, babes. <laughs> so uh okay so here comes the point so a few weeks later i'm back in la at the lermitage wait let me just uh, clarify for our audience here comes the point yeah That's here comes the did. point here comes the point uh, i get a phone call in the room shannon and i are in the room i don't have a place in la that was a phone call. That's yeah. well, that's what you do the sound effects. Yeah. Or do you do that when you answer well, the phone? Not unions aren't happy about it. You get sued because only this guy that makes the sound effect for a phone. We that's should tell the listener that that came out of Gene Simmons' mouth. That wasn't a sound not effect. Not in the back. Pardon me? Not, not out from of his the back, back end. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, Howie's daughter, did you get that one? I did get it. Okay. I got it. So, the phone rings, <laughs> Mr. Simmons. There's checking. a woman. There's a woman claiming to be Diana Ross. She wants to talk with you. And No, no, put her through. That's her. And we get on the phone. And again, this is lady class. Oh, yeah, I know. Highest order. Are you still with that girl? Yes, yes, I am. And uh, is her name Shannon? Yeah, Shannon. She's six feet tall. Yep. She had all her measurements and everything? No, she knew everything about her. And I was wondering why. And she said, well, because that's my sister-in-law. What? Because unbeknownst to me, secretly, Diana's brother, Chico, was secretly married to Tracy, Shannon's sister. That so, is true. So wait, let me just recap. <laughs> so you're doing share. You go shopping for share, and you end up buying something for... Share. No, Diana. No. So no, Diana she, took me shopping for, for Cher. Cher. Yeah. But at the same time, you went to the Playboy Mansion in your underpants. Not not in the same time. That happened. Shannon. Uh, that's how you met Shannon. After. Yeah. That's how I met Shannon. Yeah. We'll, do, we'll have a, on, a on the screen, if you're watching it, we'll be able to <laughs> figure out. And then Shannon tweet. Then you went to try to, you, your girlfriend was Diana. Yes. And you are doing her sister-in-law. No. I didn't touch whose sister-in-law. <laughs> Fuck. Who's on <laughs> Shannon Tweed is Diana Ross's sister-in-law. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> didn't you touch her? Who? You! <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> I did. This is a fucking puzzle. Okay, now the poop, the poop in the bed. Okay. <laughs> it was many years before that. Yeah. <laughs> So the timeline is going back now. We're going back. <laughs> and I was very, very sick. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it was a shot. Is it called a shard? Shard. Well, I was very sick. And Wait, I was in you bed. call it a shard? <laughs> I don't a shard you... means a piece of metal or wood oh, yeah, came yeah. out of you. Yeah. A shard you're, is you're when do- you... What, what is that word where you shart. sneeze and you poop? No, no, no. a shit fart. and a fart. You shart. can't sneeze and poop. Shart. A shart? Is a shit and a fart. When you fart, you poop. Yes. That's Wait, what you If did. you sneezed and poop, that's a sneet. No, no kidding. Yeah, if you sneeze and shit, I've oh. never, it's a sneet. I've never, I've never heard that. His... You've never heard that. You brought it up. Kids, <laughs> don't sneet. Don't sneeze. When Have you, you ever sneezed and when shit you can, yourself? When you can shart. I think that's what he meant to say. He sneezed. Let's go back Any, Anyway, I had the runs. I had, was very sick. <laughs> this is not a And so story. when I sneezed, it was, uh, you know. Okay. All right. Good story. It's a good story. I didn't do it on purpose. No, I know. Were Nobody you, does that on purpose. Whose bed was it? <laughs> Mine. It was just yours? No, he never there gets wasn't a anyone suite. Else? There's always just one bed. One I know, bed. but there was no one in there with you? You weren't with no, anyone not else? When I, no, when you're sick, it's your, yeah. not your best. No, he's, he's not his best. But it's a great story. Thanks for sharing. Well, anyway, you asked. You, you, I didn't. She did. <laughs> the, the, she said, now back to, you were telling us amazing stories about how, the, do you still talk to Diana Ross? Well, sure. Let's uh, phone her. Last time. Can we phone her? Was a while back. Can you phone her? Can you? I can. So phone her. Let's get her on the phone. Tell her oh, it's you and me. Oh, you don't know. That understand. you put us together. That's that wouldn't I wouldn't put her on the spot. What's the if, spot? Just to say hi to Howie. No, after all this look, everybody uh nobody wants to be a part of a group. Uh what do you mean you've stuff. everything you're telling us look, is the a group? Girls out, been, out there are going, Yeah, no, don't do that. I'm not going to say anything bad. I'm not going to talk about the cheating. I would just already, say I love we, you. We Our producer have. said don't do that. <laughs> yeah, Did you say don't say do that? that? <laughs> no, they didn't. You're lying no. now. No, I'm, t- I'm. Would you not call her just to say hello and tell her that we love her and that she's amazing and she helped make my career with you? But she knows that. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, okay. What I what I. Cher if she used, wants to be cut out, share. Let's to phone her. Share and okay. Diana. Every once in a while, would either call or come over to the house when I started living. When's the last town. time you talked to Diana? Wait, wait, wait. And just, you know, say, because we kept in touch. And it, when it was her birthday, I'd send her flowers or, hey, happy birthday, have, you know, be happy and healthy and stuff. And Sherry would do likewise the same. Well, that didn't work with Shannon. Oh. So much so. Uh, I talked about this before, so I'm not embarrassing uh, Shannon. Uh, she didn't like that at all. And she went to where <laughs> Cher lived and gave her a piece of business. Yeah. Basically, oh, so that's why you don't want to call because that would be bad respect, for Shannon. Out of respect for Shannon, the mother of my children, I get it. And I get by the way, and, and I love res- that. About and out of you. respect and admiration for Sharon Diana, who did nothing wrong or the highest no. quality women of any kind. Of I just, saw Diana Ross. She invited me to her 70, 75th birthday. Yeah, I was going to be there, but decided against it. Shannon wouldn't like that. Um, you were eight years old when you came to America. Did you speak a actually, word of English? I, actually. For the record, I was eight before I was nine. See what I did For an there? entire year. like another joke. You uh, came here at eight years old. With my mother, yeah. Yeah, I know, who was a Holocaust survivor. Yes. Um, you came here at eight years old. Did you speak any English? No. Hebrew. I, I spoke Hungarian, Hebrew, a little Turkish, and fluent Spanish when Why? I was a kid. Why? My nanny was Turkish, and I picked up Spanish along the way. And since then, I've lost... All remnants of Turkish can understand a little Spanish, but can't converse. Learned how to speak uh, German well enough. So now the languages are English. Had to learn to speak English. But when I learn a language, it's without an accent. So it English, is. Hebrew, Hungarian, and some German. But to come here at eight years old, you came here with your mother. Did your pa- I know that you just came here with your mother. Your father stayed in Israel. My father, unfortunately, it's not even uncommon. Shamefully, men, many men leave their families. And my father left us when I was about seven years of age. Oh, my God. Just walked got away. up and walked out. Yep. Is that, uh, is that traumatic for you? 
Sure. I remember uh, having a feeling like, what did I do? Did I do, I promise I'll be good, don't go. Did yeah. you ever rekindle a relationship with him? No, uh, although what I did do was maintain what I thought was the responsibility of, of a child, of a boy, is I bought, I paid my father's bills and bought him a house, you know, so he could live and not worry. But he remarried another, oh, I don't know, f at least four times, maybe five times. So you have siblings, you have triplets, half, right? Half brother and half sisters and maybe even more. Uh, wow. When my father passed away, uh, they found a 35-year-old Russian woman with, with him. He was uh -huh. busy until the day he wow. passed, yeah. I'll tell you a quick story is we were in New York. I was uh, having a meeting, business meeting, at a restaurant in the hotel, and the waitress comes up and she says, oh, Gene Simmons, nice to see you. Oh, hello, nice to see you and everything. Yeah, I know your father. And I thought it was just an opening, kind of like, hey, man, you know, where are you staying, kind of a thing. No, no, as it turned out, she was like a gypsy, went all over the world, just made enough money to travel, and she wound up in Israel around where Petach Tikva, where my father, uh, where I bought him a place. And she said that every day or every other day, she was a waitress there and could get by in Hebrew, this old man would come in with one leg, and it's true, my father lost his leg because he was a diabetic, and every day that she saw him, he would flirt with her. Now you're talking about a man in his 70s. Of course, I'm in my 70s now. Who would say to her, come over here and sit on my leg and make an old man happy. But it wasn't his leg, right? It was. See what he did there? I saw. No, I, I see yeah. what your father did there. Yeah. <laughs> so you come, to t you come to America. It's you and your mother. Uh, when, did, when does the music bug hit you? I saw the Beatles along with... Half the on Sullivan? Yes. I saw that too. That was amazing. Half, the, half of America's population saw that, and it was what scientists call a singularity, an anomaly. Like, it had, hadn't happened before, and it's never happened since. It was this kind of boom moment, and instantaneously the culture changed. Instantaneously, yeah. people, uh, guys started growing their hair. Right. For, for two years, I talk like that, if you talk, yeah, I'm not from here, if you talk lazy, everything's a question. Here I am, work my fingers to the bell, and all that, you know, all So you that. saw that, and then did you, you didn't have, did you have a musical, did you have Nothing. A, an instrument? Nothing, I didn't, didn't have a clue what I was doing, but I noticed all the girls were screeching. It's about the girls again. And, well, the eternal urge to merge. I don't even, it's like when you were 12 and the class was over, the bell rang. You couldn't stand up if Mr. Happy decided to pay attention. It's like, <laughs> what's the matter? Can't you control yourself? No, bitch, I can't. I don't control that. So did you go out and buy a guitar? Did your mom buy you a guitar? My mother, bless her, bought me a legitimate guitar. So I learned, taught myself some chords, watched the fingers of, and kind of bumbled my way through it. Just by watching TV? Yeah. You, you, you didn't take lessons? No, nobody did. You know, people think Lennon and McCartney and all those guys uh, took lessons. Nobody took lessons. You, you read just, music? But nobody reads music. The well, popular, there are people that do, but... No, but, no, the professional ones do, but they don't get rich. The rich folks, that includes rappers, they can't read or write music. So, so if you Neither can't can read or write music, how does... <laughs> The analogy is you don't have to be able to read or write to actually write a book. You have a microphone and you say, once upon a time when the tide was turning and the, you know. Well, how do you write a song? How do you write, how do you write? Uh, uh, you pick up a guitar or right. a piano. You don't even have to play well. If you know what a triad is, ba, 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 do, re, mi, you know, that do, right. re, mi thing. You can move your hand around a piano, even with one finger. Stevie Nicks showed me a long time ago that she had numbers written on the piano thing. You'd go, boom, when I was a child and I took it, uh, boom, and then they took me away and I can't stand it to, to this very day. So I'm making, I don't know what I'm doing, but- I'm sure it's a hit. You, you don't need uh, musical proficiency to write songs. In fact, I guarantee 
myself and you, when you go into the shower, you're humming all kinds of melodies that have probably never existed before because people are yes. musical. Yes. Yeah. So you're writing songs. You I've just written a haven't ton. recorded them. No, because I'm more focused on scrubbing. So uh, you are writing songs. You're... Uh, you, so the Beatles were on uh, Sullivan in 62, which would make you like 13 years I old. Thought, I thought 64, but okay. Maybe 64. Could be. I don't remember. Long time ago. So you're like 15 years old. 1864 for your edification. 1864. Yes. So uh, you see this, and within how much time are you? do you have a guitar in your hand? After they, Well, uh, at uh, first, because I could you know, carry a tune for a little bit. And earlier on, my voice was, you know, higher. So bands would hire me to sing Beatles songs. A cover and band. I, and I loved Otis Redding and oh, me too. Wilson Pickett and Chuck Berry. In fact, I did the eulogy for Chuck Berry's funeral and made these bands do the R&B stuff because without Roots, there wouldn't be Beatles. And then noticed that one of the bands I was in had two guitar players, but and we did all the hits, but no bass player. So I picked up a kind bass. of a, a fake Hofner bass called a Kent Japanese that my mom bought me for about 35 bucks. It's just a piece of crap, but you get boom, 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 boom. And so I bumbled my way through it, and all of a sudden, presto, I was a bass player. Why the bass? Well, because your chances of being in a band were much higher if you played bass, because everybody wanted to be a guitar player, and who wants to be a drummer? You're in the back, you gotta lug all that stuff around. So, yeah, you could play It was a good bass. choice. I also know that your bass, your bass guitar, uh, ended up in the Smithsonian, right? Oh, yeah. It's in the, and, do you know that? It's, it's like now piece of history. Well, not only that, but it's the only musical instrument that is also uh, qualified to be an invention. Why because is it an I invention? trademarked the, the axe. axe, which looks like an axe. Yeah. Because jazz terminology by musicians, right. they call Play the their axe. axe, but only I own the trademark because they never trademarked it. So I decided to do the body top, trademark that, and because of some loophole in the trademark laws, it qualifies as an invention as well. Fantastic. You are. You're and entrepreneurial. I, I own this as well. What, what is that? I own the money, money bag. bag logo. It's not just a hat. It's a money. Yes, I do have hair, kids. But you are like, uh, and, and I, I mean this in, in all the ways that are positive. You know, uh, I was fascinated. I just watched the Elvis movie. And what I was fascinated, did you see the movie? Mm -hmm. What'd you think of it? Um, look, I'm a big Baz Luhrmann fan, but that's not my... That's not my Elvis. Well, w w if you watch the movie and those who didn't, it was from Colonel Parker's point yeah. of view. Yeah. And I mean this in all the positive way because there was a lot of negative in that movie. But for you, um, Colonel Parker, I thought, was the genius who began merch and began uh, being able to yes. capitalize on everything. And it sounds like that is an inspiration for, you know, I, I think a lot. The inspiration was Disney. The Disney model is what I was always fascinated with, how Steamboat Willie became Mickey Mouse and how a cartoon begat Disney World and all the, you know, the, the tchotchkes, right. as you say. Um, we're basically, and you're talking about 5,000 licensed products, everything from kiss condoms to kiss caskets. We'll get you coming and we'll get you going. <laughs> See so the I see what I did there, Howie. That was a joke. I, that was great. A kiss condom. Yeah, I mean, just I love it when he said, "Yeah, that was great." Anyway. No, no, it was. I'm laughing on the inside. On the inside, but and I'm letting and I'm crying on the outside. No, but people at home or wherever they're listening, they're to laughing. This, they're laughing, and it's well, only they about feel the audience. Sorry. They feel sorry. You know, for me. No. there are so many people. You're talking about you saw the Beatles, and that was it for you. But so many people saw the Beatles perform, and they wanted to do that. What do you think set you apart, and why did you go and veer in that direction? You did. You didn't just emulate the Beatles because Kiss is nothing like the Beatles. It's its own. No, actually, we thought in our deluded way that it was going to be the Beatles on steroids. Yeah. Here's what I mean. When you validate something for yourself, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. It doesn't mean it's actually so. But in our deluded minds, let's pick, let's do our version of the Beatles where everybody's a star. Everybody in the band could get to sing lead songs. 
which was the case, and everybody had to play an instrument as opposed to like a Stones model where there's a guy in the front and the rest of the guys are in the back and shut up and be quiet. And the Beatles were, was the only band where every single guy in the band was a star. Had their, had their own songs and wrote. And that was the model that we did. When you, uh, Paul was here the other day and he talked about how, I, I, I can't remember what the guy's name is, but he brought you over and you met Paul in, in his apartment. Stephen Carnell, who was my uh, junior high school chump. You know, we hung out and we actually wrote some early songs together that Kiss eventually recorded. But you, you, you were in that apartment and you said to Paul, play something for me. He played well, something. I was, I was, uh, I had never met anybody else that wrote their own songs. So in my deluded way, I've always been delusional, uh, which works for me. I know I'm not the best looking guy in the world, but I don't care. I will go home with your girlfriend. There's no question about that. Look out, guys. And, and her <laughs> and, mom, too. And her mom. I have and then no he'll go take her. them shopping in New York. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so when I first met Paul, uh, Steve introduced me to him and said, you know, you should, this guy's Paul, then his name was Stanley Eisen. Right. Uh, he writes songs too. And I sort of, in my mind, I went, oh, really? Let's, <laughs> let's see what you got. And of course I came off like an asshole. And to him, I was, I didn't mean it that way, but he hated me right off the bat. And he played me, if you had a guitar here, I could show you exactly what he did. A song Do we have a guitar in the place? Sunday Driver. And I went, Wow, that's a well-written song. Let me be your Sunday driver. Let me be your Monday man. Wow. I'll do it just as fast as I can. Bum, 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 bum. Wow. Yeah. I said, that's really good. He says, okay, now you play what you got. So I played one of my early songs. The early songs I wrote were just horrible. My uncle is a raft, and he always keeps me floating. The fuck is that? <laughs> he is that wasn't so a hit? good to me. He treats me tenderly. It doesn't matter who you are. Boom, 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 boom. My uncle is a raft. He said, that's awful. <laughs> we do have a guitar hanging on okay, the wall when you come in. in. Yeah, you know, we're, we're at the front door, hanging on the wall. The eagle. Uh, I think probably, it's, the, it's not tuned. Well, I don't know. Oh, I can tune fast. You can tune it fast. And so, uh, a lot of people don't realize this, but whether it's Hendrix or really the top, most popular musicians—I don't mean EDM artists who don't play art or don't knock EDM. You have a daughter that does EDM, few, but don't she you? plays instruments and writes songs. Okay, she's a legitimate okay. artist. And I don't want you to knock huge. what the kids are doing. She's huge. What? That's okay. Because that plug in there something? No, you don't need to. Oh, you don't need to. Nah. Whose is it? Chili peppers. Sign. Chili peppers. I'll see you. Good enough. Yeah. So. So he comes up and he goes. Let me be your Sunday travel. Let me be your Monday man. I'm going, oh, that's pretty good. I'll take you anywhere I can, just as fast as I can. I go, that's a really good song. You that's the first that. thing goes, you remember that. Oh, verbatim. are you kidding? We later recorded it and uh, called it uh, Let Me Know. And then you let me know. That's that song. He wanted to record it with you, though, even though you said that he, you came off air, or he didn't like you. Well, eventually we decided that, despite my personality shortcomings, that we needed to be in the same band. Do we, you have? Uh, is there between you and Paul? Because you're both very talented, but also very uh, vibrant personalities. Is that uh, like? I would imagine because you write songs and he writes songs. Is there a um, um, clash? A clash sometimes about no, what should be the single. The clash, okay. Never been a clash in the way you think of it, but the core personality trait that we both share is responsible. You work hard. The word responsible. 
that we're both responsible. That that thing we share, you show up on time, you do the work, whatever needs to be done. Is that why you voted some of the other members out? Because you were doing more well, work than practical. them? that's practical. That's another big word like gymnasium. What do you mean? You got, well, it's tough to drive a car with flat tires. So friends or no friends, we didn't put a band together to have friends and hang out. You wanted to put a band together so you could make it. And if people use drugs and alcohol and, and it impairs your performance, just like on a soccer field, if somebody, you pass the ball to somebody and they can't get the goal because they're high, get rid of their sorry ass. Both matter. you and Paul have lived a very clean life as oh, far yeah. as... Oh, I've never been high or drunk in my life, never smoked cigarettes. That's so not the epitome of what people I, think I, rock and I roll is. I recognize that. And to this day, when I meet people, you know, they're often high and are blabbering. Did you experience any of the anti-Semitism that Paul wrote about in his book with the band? Uh, a little bit. Did it bother you as much as... It's not like being, it's not like being black or Hispanic you, because, you know, sometimes you can hide behind, oh, I'm Italian or I'm Greek. You know, Jews have that ability. But basically, I, I was born Chaim Witz, and I understood that that didn't work. You have to... I did. I realized for myself that in order to succeed, I've got to be a chameleon of sorts. Basically, dress British, think Yiddish. Keep I your, love that. Keep your Jewness New to yourself. New t-shirt to sell. Yeah, can't, you're, you're Jewish. That's yeah, fine. Shut the fuck up. Keep it to yourself. Nobody's interested. And I, I meet all kinds of people all the time. People but you've been work. a huge supporter of Israel. You're not quiet about your Judaism. Well, what choice have you got? If, to, if that, to not, I mean, I think you're making the right choice, but I'm just saying that the choice is that people don't have to know your religion or don't have to know where you come from. Well, for a long time, I never talked about it because it wasn't the point. I'm sharing the planet with everybody else and all the differences we think we have with each other. When that first alien comes down, they won't have a clue what you're talking about. I'm from Serbia. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm from Zimbabwe. And the alien says, yeah, so? You're all... Terrans, yeah. right from terra firma. Wow. You're all Terrans. I love your philosophy. Well, and then you die. That's all there is. Well, that's not a happy ending. So, um, You're his daughter? Yes. Why was that like? What, what is was that? what <laughs> like? <laughs> what like? You know, he comes home, does he put a condom on his head and blow it up? Like, what? It was a glove. How could you be so fascinated <laughs> of what her life was? You gave birth to two children who lived, and we saw that in Family Jewels. I thought you were going to say you gave birth to her. <laughs> what a way to find out. I didn't Maury give birth to Let's go, get this Gene straight. Gene Simmons how was it, is the father. <laughs> how was it for your kids? Well, Shannon imbued her ethics, morality, and everything. They are her kids, both Nick and Sophie, who are marvelous successful, just amazing people. They happened to be our kids, but I had very little to do with it. I was there, but other I wasn't there a lot. I was on the road. That's my, that's my point. So but you, you were there, there at the beginning for the consummation. For I the think consummation. I was there. And then you have to, you can't have it all. I was told I was there. <laughs> yeah. So we get a great deal from the pool, man. <laughs> you know, see what he just did there. I did. I she yeah. gets it. She gets the jokes. Um, yeah, no, I was there, uh, but most of the time I was on the road. You're still on the road, and you're doing crazy, crazy Business. 70 million people. Yeah. And and not only 70 million, I talked to Paul about this a little bit. What I find fascinating is the endurance that KISS has. I love KISS, but it still speaks to the kids of today. And you sent me a clip. I have this clip. Can we play that clip? It's, it's, uh, it's adorable, but it also speaks volumes to what the mark KISS has on this world this little girl must be three years old listen to this even no, if you're not no, watching she just, it. she's 56 well then <laughs> she's got an <laughs> she issue looks good for her age then there should be a telethon what, uh, for what, what clip is this you watch this you'll look at it you can see it right here on the screen below my desk you'll be able to watch it okay. put on your head you better call him you better call him you better call him who you better call Gene Simmons. Um, you better call Gene Simmons or I'm not getting you a surprise. You better call Gene Simmons right now. And say what? Then say I'm a kiss one. <laughs> you better call them. You better call all of them. Who? <laughs> you better call 
put Jim 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 be the Chris and Ace Ray and Chris and, and she knows the whole group and Ace Ray and Jim Jim and Jim the Ray. Chris and Ace Ray the back of all of them. I thought this was an adorable yeah. clip that shows, but the fact that you said this woman is 56 years old, maybe we shouldn't be making fun of her. This could be an issue. How adorable is that? Paul Stanley. Paul Stanley. I'm going to kiss one. Kiss one. I'm a kiss one. Kiss one? Yeah. 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 Okay, we can we heard it. She's a kiss one. So that's like nine you've probably you can't, you can't buy that. You can't uh that's beyond that's the stuff. We're on stage and we play to big crowds, uh arenas and stadiums. Big Japan. sometimes a hundred thousand all that. But in the front row when you see a little kid sitting on dad's shoulders and they're all wearing makeup and that first hand goes for the first time and whether it's doing my hand gesture or pounding that you you know i have to turn away for a second because you get that i'm getting for clamp now but that's what i'm saying <laughs> that's it she knows every name of the band she is legitimately a fan that her she's a fan her parents are obviously a fan and if she has a child that's the the, the parents of the parents that's like three or four generations yeah. and you have been able to sustain do you ever look at what you are where you are and go how the fuck did this happen how did that little kid who left haifa ended up in america didn't speak the language is now sitting on top of the world and the world knows you and loves you you know it's tough when you're when you're on a roller coaster ride it has its own momentum and you're you know you're trying to catch your breath and all that and at the end it all goes by so fast we're approaching our 50th year yeah and you know when you're in the front of the train and it just wishes away you see all the trees go by right. but you don't have a chance to take it all in right and you, now you can see it with the fans or if you watch a documentary or something but it's just too much uh, to take in so you don't really you're do you talk about retirement? Paul, Paul did a little bit. Did you, do you talk about retirement? No, I, I intend to use it or lose it kind of a thing. I've got, you know, we have this restaurant chain, Rock and Brews, two at LAX. Now there are three casinos, Rock and Brews casinos. I'm a partner in a uh, artificial intelligence entity and a metaverse company and Alaska cold storage and just a lot of stuff. And you should, should, all of you out there, don't wait to die. Just get up, get up off your sorry ass. Look, but, but I, getting there, listen, I got to say that uh, on AGT, KISS uh, performed on AGT. And I got to say that, uh, the, Paul reminded me of this, but when um, they did a rehearsal, and in the rehearsal, you weren't there for the rehearsal. They had to do camera blocks, and you don't have to be there for that. But they had you had a I don't know if it's your stage hand, your road manager, or whoever, wearing the full your full regalia, and he fell. Of course he did. <laughs> and he was like a fucking turtle on his back. You they can't had to get up. Yeah. No, he was lying on his back <laughs> in full Gene Simmons uh, regalia. I shouldn't have laughed, but it was kind of... <laughs> of course it's funny, but people have no idea how difficult it is. Paul's outfit's a little easier because it's spandex and, you know, flexible, although he's got, you know, high shoes. My outfit, are dragon boots, each of them weighs close to a bowling ball, about, with the base and everything, it's almost 40 pounds. Right. So, so when you fall on your back, have you fallen sure, on stage? Sure. And how do you get up? Do have, you, people have to run you there? Bend, you bend your leg and position it like a tripod so that you the back leg is on the floor yeah back foot see and your kneecap is in the front so now you've got it and then you pick yourself up with the other foot if you see what i mean i don't but it doesn't matter those <laughs> people who are wearing 40 pounds of armor and it's, have fallen you hey, should listen tough. to this podcast it teaches you it's tough and then you got to spit fire and fly through the air and yeah and all that stuff you know in hindsight I would have said to the younger Gene Simmons, you know, be in a band like the Ramones or U2 or somebody, put on a, a T-shirt and wear some sneakers 
and like that. Well, you oh, did that for years. You did you, when you took off the makeup. You were in your regular... never in a comfortable outfit. It was always you were lifted, and girls will tell you, you know, if there's an event, they're going to arch their back, put some stilettos on, and torture themselves with hours of makeup and all that. Your feet are going to be killing you. The your back's going to kill you, but it's worth it because it's it an really event. Is. Yes, and uh, right, and it, get, and it gets you the girls. Yes, but as uh, you, female, I, speaking as, of getting girls, you yeah. have uh, claimed that you have bedded over five thousand women. Is that true? No, four thousand eight hundred. That's closer. <laughs> 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 oh my well, God! What's that? Let me tell you what what is that? Is. Okay. I love Shannon so much. Yeah. Because she tortures oh. me. Is that her? Put her on. Can you see what it says? It says, pills take your fucking pills. <laughs> That's what it says. What it's is an wrong? alarm to take your pills. I, yeah, it reminds me. Better take your pill. What's wrong? I, I already did. There's nothing wrong. <laughs> it's stasis. You know, you take your, I got the vitamin boost over here and the poop pill over there. The poop pill like so that. you don't shit the bed again. Once is enough. Once you shit the bed. Once is enough. You know that's a that's an. And I would write you to, if that's, that's an a, advertisement for a poop. Uh, but I'm saying if you do, if that's what the pill is, I would like you to take it now because I don't want you to shit on our more couch. than one. It says plural. Take your fucking, fucking pills. pills. And by the way, in 15 minutes, that's going to go off again. She so all did day that. long. Yep. Wow. I, just hearing you pluck at a guitar, you're like you're a legend. The, your guitar, as we mentioned, is in the Smithsonian. This is just, I don't want to talk when you do that because I want to hear. Are you still writing? Are you writing now? Are, like, I don't this mean very to write this moment? Not this very moment. But you've had such this, the, see, I think of you as a rock and roller. But I also know that you worked with Liza Minnelli and Engelbert Humperdinck. Right. Not at the same time, but yes, I managed Liza. I know, you were shopping career. for Liza and you met <laughs> Engelbert Humperdinck. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But at one point, I have to say, the uh, I went to see a drag show in New York, and the <laughs> where's this going? Holy Trinity! What this is? Uh, go I, okay. Go ahead. What that was weird. What I was about to say? No, I just don't know how this part of the story is going to end up. Well, Liza well, Minnelli. that's why at if Ruby I Foos? tell it, you'll find Wasn't out. Wasn't that Ruby okay. Foos? Is that the one in New York? Is that what? one? Is Ruby that, Foos. Ruby Foos is the drag show. That's the Chinese restaurant drag show in New York. No, this was. Uh, oh, you know, I don't know. Okay. I okay. never pay attention. I just they said, you don't know where Come you are. here. Okay. Gonna, yes. right. And there was a drag show, and there was the holy trinity of drag, and it was Cher and Diana and Liza on stage, <laughs> and I'm <laughs> hiding in the back. Cher, Diana, and Liza. So, so, yeah, two out of three. No, how do you, I wait. have no comment. Third. He, oh. No, all three. Oh. You fucked Liza. What are you doing? You <laughs> fucked Liza Minnelli. What are you Did doing? Did you fuck Liza <laughs> you Minnelli? You brought it up. We're in a commercial now. We're in a commercial now, and I am really excited about today's new sponsor. You know why? Because what this company's doing is genius, brilliant, breakthrough. They are called Masterworks. And here is why it's genius. Masterworks.com figured out how to let regular people invest like billionaires. Uh, and and uh, they want me to do a quip here about very rich people, you know? But I don't have a quip <laughs> about very rich people. That's what it says in brackets, okay? But you, these are like multi-million dollar investments, but you don't need to have multi-millions, right? Yeah, and most importantly, Masterworks produces results. Even during COVID and now with inflation, I'm talking like 29% returns on average. And it's not a misprint, 29% returns. And every day, the news about, economy, the, about the economy seems to be getting worse, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm so excited to have them as our sponsor. Brand new sponsor, because mm -hmm. this is such a breakthrough to everyday people. Demand is surging, but I'm Howie Mandel, so I am getting you priority access. That's the beauty of me. That's how powerful I am. That means right to the front of the line, right? Yeah. Just go to masterworks.art slash Howie to skip the wait list at Masterworks. See important regulations, A disclosures at masterworks.com slash CD. That's masterworks.art slash Howie to skip the wait. Now I'm going to check, uh, I'm going to go check them out right now. Okay. Masterworks.com. You just I said it. You said not, it was your I holy did trinity. Did you fuck I Liza did, Minnelli? I did not. Liar. Did she give you Look a hand job? Look at smile. Did, did Liza Minnelli give you a <laughs> yes. hand job? No. 
Did Liza Minnelli suck your penis? Nope. Dad. What? <laughs> These are just questions. Show business questions. Show business. I ch- what kind of relationship did you have with Liza Minnelli? I was her music manager. You managed Liza Minnelli? Yes. <laughs> and did you help? Did you produce and record music for her? I arranged for her to be produced by the Pet Shop Boys, and she had a big worldwide gold record thing. What is the hit? Oh, good God. You're talking 40 or 50 years ago. I want to play the Liza Minnelli produced, Gene Simmons produced yeah, just, song. Uh, not produced, managed. The oh. Pet Shop Boys. With Liza Minnelli? Yes. Pet Shop Boys with Liza Minnelli. I mean, it was Liza Minnelli's Liza record, but the Pet Shop Boys actually produced it. Yeah, but it's but kind it was of a, a hit. weird. Big hit. And Engelbert Humperdinck, how did that happen? Engelbert called and wanted me to be on a duet record. Losing My Mind? That's it. Losing my mind. Let's, That's let's play this. It's really good. It's a commercial. It's a commercial, but let's get past the commercial. So this is. There she is. looks very pretty. It's playing on the headphones. Very much off point. Very. It was huge in the clubs, you can tell. Come on, Liza. That's the club mix. They're all dancing. I went to the club. To- Everybody's saying, oh. That's, that, but it's so eclectic. I wouldn't think about you and Liza Minnelli or you and Engelbert Humperdinck. Well, Liza called me uh, and wanted to know why Madonna had hits and why can't she have hits. I go, oh, you can, you can. Uh, I, well, she does, I don't have a record label. I said, tell you what, I'll take you in. Uh, I called Walter Yetnikoff, the head of uh, CBS, which Columbia and Epic and all that. And I said, Walter, I think you should sign Liza. And he said, okay. And we walked out. She had a deal. And she went, that's it? I go, yeah, that's it, if you're with me. (laughs) That's fantastic. And you got her a hit. I connected the pieces, but the people that got her the hit were the Pet Shop Boys. You always have to give credit where credit is due. And you did. You were going down another road, then you got sidetracked. I did. You want to talk about you hooking up with Liza Minnelli? Oh, you want me to talk about that? I did (laughs) When when you say go down another road, I don't call it another road. (laughs) (laughs) You got a room full of people there taking notes. They're not. Those are kids. They don't understand. (laughs) They don't understand. One of the guys looks like... uh, what was the guy? You know, he took his sunglasses off just now. Who? Oh. Hank Azaria. Who? Oh. That's uh, Rich. 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 Yeah. I, and I got Rich in there. There's Mikey Winfield, who was the comic on AGT this year. There's all sitting oh, yeah. back there. Yeah, they're all. And the guy with the girls' earrings, he's in there too. The guys with the girls' earrings. <laughs> Are there? <laughs> Kyle the. The but you don't have pierced ears? They're not. I don't have a pierced anything. They're really? not girls' earrings. They're no. not hoops. I had I had a uh, horrible thing. As life began, they cut half of my schmeckle off, and I said, that's it. The circumcision you're talking about. The bricks. Yeah, well, it in was my half. Case, it was half? Half. Oh, I used to be huge as a yeah. baby. I was massive. <laughs> They're supposed to just take a tip, but you <laughs> gave them a, a, like it was a sausage I had party. no say in it, but I otherwise I would have, you know, what's He's 12 a good inches? Tipper. Hmm? He's a good Howie, tipper. what's 12 inches in Jewish? Nothing. Nothing. Kids? But it- <laughs> See, that's now it. the girls are smiling. <laughs> They're laughing. <laughs> They're they smiling. Mikey, you taking notes sorry. for your jokes? <laughs> <laughs> no? <laughs> They're feeling sorry for us. You're very funny. Oh, <laughs> you, uh, you have had and continue to have an illustrious career making a mark on pop culture, on in every kind of venue, whether it be you know music um, and not just rock and roll, as we just as we just pointed out, but in um, you, you know uh, movies, television. We just started a film company, huge, really. Yes, put me in a movie, Chiron. What's that? Put me in a movie. 
You? Yeah. I think you're buying NBC. Who are you kidding? Well, you're not, buying NBC. What does that have to do with like? He's I, a rich Jew. What are you? Forced? But that's how, I don't want to. I'm not asking for big money. I'm just asking. Did you get a slice of that 90 million Simon deal? That no, I didn't get any of that. And I'm not making any money on this. No, of course not. I'm doing this out of love. <laughs> love. Love of you, money. Gene. <laughs> and do you remember, I, t I brought this up to Paul, he didn't remember. You brought me to the uh, uh, recording once uh, with I the did. Tenenbaum. I can't remember. Uh, we did War Machine. Yeah. With Stan Brooks. Yes. I never got high. That's the advantage. Did, did that did my singing in that yes. group make it on the album? You better watch yeah. out, because I'm, I'm a war, war machine. machine. Yeah, but I'm singing on it. Am, on am I on the album? That's correct. Wow! Now, are you? You're? Are you lying? Nope. They really took play yes. that song, yes. War Machine, <laughs> and you and tell it me it's me. Group? Yeah. You better watch out. It's me, Michael Rotenberg, Stan, uh, Stan, Stan Brooks, Brooks bunch, and uh, Tenenbaum. You knew the the yeah. father, uh, but now you know he's a big uh, producer. You know I, that I understand. He did that. Two and a Half Men. He did. We were a motorized bicycle. Company. Oh, this. But it wasn't Chuck Lorre. But yes, you know, no. I'll tell you another thing. Is the guy I came up with the riff, ba 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 ba, which I wrote on keyboards, and then the song was written, and I couldn't finish the rest of the song. So there was a new Canadian writer who I know flew who that down. is. You do. Tell Brian. Me. Brian. That's correct. Adams. Brian Adams uh, at that point had a disco song that people thought was a girl because they sped up his voice. Let me take you dancing. Something right. like that. But Brian Adams had just started to be active in songwriting. He finished off the song. Wow. So it's uh, Gene Simmons. So listen to this. Just... Wait till you hear me. Wait till you. <laughs> this is me. <laughs> That's me playing what? I was in the studio. What do you think of me? Gotta wait for the chorus. Sorry. Oh, this isn't me? Not yet. That's oh. me singing. <laughs> Here I come. Not yet. No. Oh. Now, me? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Here I go. One, two, three. This is me. Ah, oh, I hear it. <laughs> you said that. That's me. Ah. War machine! Yeah. Wow! That's me! That is. That's true. Oh my god, look, look at all the groupies <laughs> gathering. Did the other members of the band ever get upset that you brought people into the studio to uh, record? Oh, at no. first, but then they heard me sing and yeah. they realized it was worth it. <laughs> okay, you got it. Oh my god, I'm amazing. No, it was Incredible. fun. I'll tell you, the, uh, probably the biggest thrill co-writing was... Remember, delusional. I am delusional. And I know it. So that helps me do crazy things. Like out of the blue, you never find out unless you ask. I wanted to write a song with Bob Dylan. Yeah. Which on the surface of it, you're on crack. Nobody's going to care and he's not going to answer your phone. Oh, more women came in. That's Whitney Cummings. I know, but she's doing the duck face right now. The duck face? Yes, she did a little... The top, you know, the what bottom are you doing, that Whitney? came out. My face. That's your face. That's no, my it's face. Not. <laughs> no, it's not. That's my face. face. <laughs> Look, there, there's the duck face right there. No, you can hear her. There she is. She's saying you're making. He's saying that you're making Whitney, a duck face. Whitney, you're one. You're one of the chosen people, aren't you? No. Uh, I am She's not, not a Scientologist currently. <laughs> <laughs> you can't hear. She said. She, it. she said she, she's not a Scientologist. You think she's Jewish? Whitney oh, sure. Cummings? Oh, yeah. There's yeah. nothing wait, for, Jewy about wait, wait. her. 49% Jewish. No, told, you're not. Swear to God. I, I told 49%. you. 49%. Oh, yeah. well, Where did you the 1% you go? You can't hide the I'm Jew. I'm 49% Jewish. I know numbers. I know. Yeah. <laughs> From 23 and <laughs> me? We round down. <laughs> <laughs> how, how exactly, inquiring minds want to know, how exactly do you get to 49 instead of 50? Isn't the, like... It's a Jewish thing. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> I am a kike. <laughs> 
Oh. <laughs> By the way, that, will you get canceled for calling yourself that? No, because people aren't educated enough to understand that it's actually a compliment because Keichel which is a circle or a ball, uh -huh. is God's perfect creation. All planetary objects are... So Kike are is nice? Are you saying that balls are a perfect creation? I think for some of us, uh, they are. <laughs> what, you you think differently, Whitney? I haven't seen them in a while, but I've never been particularly impressed. I feel like all balls look like they're 100 years old. No. Um, no. <laughs> some are blessed to be... Uh, I always think of them like he was working on, like he created the woman... And then he was working on the man and he didn't finish, so that's a to-go bag. <laughs> <laughs> it's a doggy bag. It's a, it's a doggy bag. But also the same thing um, can be said about uh, the word redneck. People think it's an insult, but actually the um, etymology of it is from the ba uh, Battle of Blair Mountain in West Virginia. And it was the uh, second biggest basically uprising in history besides the Civil War. And these were these heroes that uh, basically fought against the oil companies that were in coal companies that were destroying uh, West Virginia and they wore red bandanas around their necks. So redneck is actually a, you're a savior, what a hero. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> How, I'm, I'm sure your pants do cut off circulation to your brain a little bit, so I'll talk slower. Oh, my God. So uh, speaking of potato chips, a keichel, uh -huh. all planetary objects are circular. They go around their own orbits, and they go around uh, circular. Everything, no matter how big or how subatomic you get, it's all circle, and that is a keichel. Okay, and uh, back to the Civil War? Yes, and so the red bandanas, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's all. I was just backing up your point. I actually <sighs> thought in my misguided delusional way that the red had to do with uh, people illegally crossing the Rio Grande and the red necks from the sun hitting the back of the neck. Is that well, That's just racist. Uh, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. I could no. sneeze and it's a racist. That's what comment. most people think. Most people think it's like workers in the field right. being sunburned yes. and right. say, you know, redneck, you're you know, being classist or whatever. Did you just make this stuff up just yes, because I you're did. Whitney? Yes, used, I did. Yeah. I am, people don't realize <laughs> that. By the way, I love your version of uh, I love, you know, the Dolly Parton song. Oh, there's my. He's got to take his fucking pills. <laughs> his this wife. Is, he this takes is not pills. not a joke. It's not a it's joke. Um, it says, take your fucking pills. Yeah, the mother yeah. of my children says, no, it really it does say that. Is that just an alarm that goes off when women talk too much? It says, watch out, it says, watch out for Whitney. She's good. <laughs> By the way, I thought... What is sorry, going sorry. on right <laughs> But I thought you died at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel after you kicked in the bathtub. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's another... That's oh. another Whitney. Oh, I'm sorry. That's another Whitney. It wasn't her. Did this you is, just give me the clap with the... Whitney. I think you already have it. <laughs> he betted 40, he said he's betted over 4,800 women. I didn't say that. Your daughter said that. Well, no, well, because you've stated that. It's yeah. written. Yeah. <laughs> and he came I didn't this just close. Come up with he it. came this close to fucking Liza Minnelli. No, I think what he happened? did. He did I, do it. He's just not saying it. I, he did do it. You know. You know, he lived with Cher and he cheated on Cher with Diana Ross. And then cheated on Diana Ross. With his with, wife. With his, yeah. Did you take your pill? <laughs> <laughs> I did before. Pills. Pills, before, right. Before I came down, yeah. B came down here. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty wild. Yeah, you, what? Go ahead. What's wild? That's a lot of women. 4,800. But you didn't beat, um, I remember reading um, Wilt Chamberlain's book. He lied? Or I you're lying? Did I say that? That Wilt Chamberlain didn't bed that many women? Did I say he lied? You said that's you said, a lie. You said it's a lie. I mouthed it. I didn't say <laughs> it. didn't come out. Oh. Okay. <laughs> anyway. And who, ca and who cares? You know, Nobody you cares. All, you live your life. You I care. stumble and fall, no, and care. then you die. There's just nothing else. But you want to know something? I could talk to you all fucking day. I, I love you. I know. No, I do. I, <laughs> I love what you did. I love you. And you know, ultimately, you're a good human being. You're a great dad. You're a great husband. You're very, uh, and I love the answers that you gave me and how respectful you are of your wife. And I love your talent and I love how eclectic you did. And I love that well, you just took that you're time. Ver you're very kind, but I can't leave without saying that uh, Shannon was, continues to be my Jesus. There's just no other way uh, to put and it. And every Jew without, needs a Jesus. 
Uh, we are, we are Jesus. We are them. But I would, uh, <laughs> I would certainly veer off into darkness without her. That's wonderful. And Nick and Sophie, our kids. Yeah. And I never. And you know what that says? You got to trust Canadians. I was going to do that. <laughs> Is that a bra? Is that a bra? <laughs> Did she, she just throw me her Whitney, underwear? Yes, yeah. Whitney Cummings. Just yeah, check think, it out. I think Touch Whitney. It. I think that one just stuck on the, my back. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a skid mark on there? What is that? I don't think. I think it was. I think a, it was a bra. I think that's a bra. You can't tell the difference between a bra and panties. That's a bra. That's a. I think that's a. Unless she a, shit her bra. I thought it was a bungee thing where you sit on it. A, a, a bungee? Were you smelling it? Not bad. <laughs> you smell her bra. You smelling like, Whitney like, coming? Yeah. Smells like Charlie. You have boob sweat. The cleanup guy as I walked in. <laughs> Holy crap. I love how he's talking about how he, he reveres his wife as he's sniffing your bra. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a medical device. I don't even well, think Look at this. Can... Look at this. This is a shot. He's got her bra on his head. You know, you haven't seen anything until in the heyday when the village people were playing. How many bras and panties some would stick, you know, when the were thrown up on stage, okay. and there was only the lead singer who was interested. The rest of the guys were more interested in each other. Right. Everybody in the village people. Were, I don't know what the segue has what to do. What a with, breaking uh, news here. that <laughs> people were. That is. There were uh, some people in the village people that were gay. It's amazing. And Whitney, now with Whitney, that breaking Whitney, piece of news. Whitney, why are you here? She's what? doing. A, she's she's doing be a on the podcast. podcast. <laughs> she's next. Well, She's doing a podcast. Why yeah, is a, any of these women in an office? <laughs> well, they're, they're here because... I'm here to clean. I'm, I'm cleaning I'm here up to clean. later. I'm a huge fan of Whitney and Cummings. that's the way it should be. Oh, my gosh. Th thank oh you. My, uh, oh, my gosh. Oh no. We just stop I don't know. This is, we're going to stop it before you get in trouble. You are the best, buddy. Thank you so much for being here. Gene Simmons. You're going to get in trouble. Go. Now get out. <laughs> 